Welcome to Shrink Wrap Hawaii. My name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a marriage and family therapist here in Hawaii. And it gives me a lot of pleasure to tell you that sitting next to me today is Dr. Tomas Cummings, his third trip to the show here. And today we're going to talk about yoga and mental health. Welcome, Tomas. Thank you. Aloha. Thanks for coming on Good again. Good to be here again. Yeah. yeah. So first, let's have a little def definition of terms. OK. Everybody thinks they know what yoga is, but what is yoga? Well, of course, it's evolved through the years. But those of us who are a little more purists, you know, it goes back to ancient India. And uh, a long time ago, uh, a person by the name of Patanjali wrote down these sutras or truths, you know, ultimate truths about the way the world is and how to be in the world. And, and then there developed the practice of yoga that most people think of when they think of yoga that involve uh, positions we take with our body that we call asanas. And often it's very connected to the breath. Mm -hmm. And you do a flow of one position or one asana to the next asana. And um, there are classes all over. It's grown in popularity exponentially over the past decade. Yeah. And so the types of yoga have, have kind of uh, become a di diaspora, become Americanized, like this hot yoga that people like. Right. Um, it, it's not traditionally based, you know. In India, it's very hot that they recommend in the writings that you practice in the early morning and the evening when it's cool. So it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty much an American thing to, to do the hot yoga. Uh -huh. The very essence of yoga as it was developed and, and evolved through the years is a system of personal development to prepare you, and, and the poses are to prepare you for meditation. Uh -huh. So in a, in a healthy kind of a form of yoga that I'm going to talk about today that's good for mental health. It involves practicing the asanas, the forms or positions, and the meditation at the end of it. Uh, so I'm guessing that I didn't realize what asana, the asana means breath. So No, it means a form, form. A, a so position it, that you take with your body. Vipassana. Uh, is that, that must be related. Uh, it's related, but not. It's, it's related and it sounds alike. Because that's a kind of yoga, right? But, no, Vipassana is a type of meditation. Ah, yeah. different. Yeah, it's, very, it's, very, it's the traditional type of Buddhist meditation that's most closely aligned with this Western mindfulness, scientifically based meditation. Ah, uh, like the John Kabat-Zinn Yeah, exactly. John Kabat-Zinn and Vipassana's style of meditation are uh -huh. quite similar. I see. So most of origin, yeah. the ones yeah. that we see at the yoga studios here are hatha yoga? Yeah, hatha yoga means taking the form in your body, taking the positions. Uh -huh. And in most classes, you go through a series of forms or positions of varying levels of difficulty depending on the class that you took. And most yoga studios will have three levels, right? Uh -huh. And then at the end, you lie down on your back and sometimes use some props under your knees or a blanket over you, and you meditate for 15 minutes. That's the corpse pose? That's the corpse pose, right. yes. Yeah. yeah, Shavasana. They call and it. from what you're saying, that's the most important part. I think that's the most important part. It's the mindfulness part of it and the, the healthy connecting of mind and body that occurs during yoga uh -huh. that's so healthy for you. A good yoga teacher like Brigitte, one of my favorites, or Martin at Aloha Yoga Kula, they will throughout the class keep saying good things like, this is not a competition, just go to your edge wherever you mm. are and breathe and relax. Or they might say, see, the pose is a little difficult and you might hear your mind just starting to chatter a little more, chitta britta they call it, chattering mind. Oh, I can't do this, oh, I'm so out of shape, oh, I can't stretch, and they will tell you, just tell that mind to be quiet. Just breathe. Just relax in the breath because it's really about going to your edge, say in a forward fold where you feel this pain initially in your hamstrings, mm -hmm. and you breathe and relax with it. That's very good training for the mind. So it will transfer to day-to-day -to -day life when it gets a little intense, say with your partner over an argument you're having. 
and just kind of relax. You know how to relax in the face of some physical stimulation or pain can transfer to emotional uh, pain. Uh, or arousal, so the okay? stress in your hamstring, you can take yeah. that to this emotional stress and you can say, transfer oh, I the dealt with skill. that. I can deal yeah. with it. Yeah, and it's, not, it's not a logical thing you're going to uh -huh. do. It's just this continuing, continuing to reside in the breath, as they say, to relax. There's something about with your this voice. intensity going on. Okay, <laughs> something about my voice. No, that's very, it's like when you're talking about just relax and mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because you are a yoga teacher or a therapist or both, you have this very calming voice and every time you say something like relax, I just want to take a breath and relax. Good, good. It means. Did you work on that? <laughs> no, I've, it's just, um, I've been doing this for a few decades and uh, I've led a lot of groups in conscious relaxation, which is a, kind of like a, a, a deep relaxation process. It's, it's akin to meditation. Mm. And way back when I was in grad school, people would say, oh, your voice is so calming, it's so relaxing. I have to spice it up when I'm a professor and talking. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to be a human barbiturate in class. Do you teach also? I've taught a lot, yeah. 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 So, um, But it's hypnotic, so I mean, that must yeah. also be good as a therapist. It can be when I'm trying to get a person very relaxed and in anxiety disorder treatment, it, it, we teach our patients the skills of self-regulation, we call it, regulating yourself to stay calm, to stay cool and calm, so that you make wise decisions based on your values and your goals rather than based on the heat of the moment, you know, anger or something, right? So in any anxiety management or anger management treatment, I teach the patient how to relax. I guide them through relaxation and meditation exercises. I give them handouts. They can go to my website and have me guide them with the recording on my website. Oh, that's cool. I recommend apps. And then they practice, practice. They come back. They have a log. They talk to me about the practice. They keep a log of their meditation. Yeah, yeah. so they can talk to me about struggles they're having with it. Let me know how they're progressing. Even and sometimes the therapy is talking about why we didn't practice. You know, so, um, but yeah, it's, it's very much an integral part of any treatment for any anxiety disorder, including PTSD, panic disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, any of the phobias. I see a lot of people now with social phobia. So they're yeah, so they're used to texting their, and stuff yeah, and they don't do a lot people. of face-to-face -face work. So. Yeah, what do you do about that? Like, I struggle with that in my practice. Like, oh. somebody that comes in with their cell phone on, do you tell them to shut it off? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. You just say that's the rules. Bing bong. Yeah, turn yeah. it off. I say we got we have to talk with each other now. No. It's not <laughs> uncommon. It's not uncommon that they'll show me a text argument they oh. had with their yeah, girlfriend. Yeah, what do you do with that? That's okay. It helps me understand yeah. what he's experiencing. Uh, okay. Cuz he's just that. showing me, you know, rather than I might not remember it correctly. Here's what she wrote and here's yeah. what I wrote. Like this one woman, she and her partner um her girlfriend was really giving her a hard time, and uh -huh. she showed me the text exchange, and I just kind of deduced that this woman's partner was just itching for an argument. Yeah. Because the other, my patient was being real cool and just saying, I'll tell you later, not right now. I'm very sleepy. I need a rest. Let's talk about this. Kept saying that, and the other one kept on just going. Uh -huh. I saw so it sometimes text. it's helpful. Yes, it is. To, yeah. to, you know, like, like a patient will bring in a letter. They'll bring in an email sometimes. Right. You know. Yeah. But at any rate, getting back to, to yoga, um, there's been quite a bit of research done on it. It started way back in the 60s with people who did yoga a lot, like mm -hmm. the masters uh -huh. in, in India. It showed that one of the things they would do is wire them up, their brain up to an EEG, uh -huh. and then have them get in a meditative state, then put their hands in ice water. And they could keep their hands in ice water for 45 minutes and keep the alpha wave activity going in their brain. Alpha is a sign we're relaxing. As we fall asleep, we go through an alpha state. Mm -hmm. When we're meditating, we go into an alpha state. Yeah. So they can do that despite this intense pain, right? Well, you may just make the alpha thing reminded me, um, a colleague of ours, Jim Spira. Yeah, yeah. He has this little, I forget what it's called, this little thing you put on your head that measures your brain waves. Yeah. Like 
as they're happening. Yeah. And so you meditate, and, the, and when you get to the alpha, you hear these little like seagulls making yeah. nice noises. Yeah, it's like a little neurofeedback. Yeah, it's exactly I have one of those, but mine's a computer, and you you don't you don't put on a you put on kind of a clown like thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And Just you can put on sensors. even more if you want sensors right. and so yeah. neurofeedback. You get feedback how you're doing. Right. Oh, so you go, okay, that's what alpha state feels. Yeah, you know, when I tried it, yeah. <laughs> what would happen? Every time I got to the seagulls, yeah. I would be aware, oh, I did it, and boom, they and go away. And lose it, go into beta, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's kind of like, because now you're kind of looking in on it and remarking on it rather than just, just being, being there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And when we meditate, we train our mind to stay in these states. You know? So some people talking about meditation and yoga kind of meditation, is that mm -hmm. different than, say, mindfulness meditation? Yes, it is. In fact, in the traditional mindfulness uh, protocol, uh, mindfulness-based stress reduction, MBSR, right. it's an eight-week class. You attend right. weekly for three hours of class and then a six-hour session. Mm -hmm. And um, part, an integral part of the MBSR program is light yoga. And they say light because MBSR, mindfulness-based stress reduction, is about reaching the average Joe and Mary. Right. Right. So they don't want to make it too intense. Yeah. Know? And so there's, there's gentle yoga that's a, an integral part of it. In these classes, they'll be doing, doing yoga. They'll ask you to practice at home. What's different between yoga and sitting meditation is with yoga, you are taking poses that can be a little intense, so you're challenging your body, mind, your body, mind, and your mind starts that chattering, oh, this hurts, oh, I'm so stiff, oh, I'm so out of shape. And you learn to calm that mind. The same thing you're doing in meditation, where you're saying, not, not now, let's focus on the breath. Just, just focus on the breath. Now you're getting this kind of challenge of intense sensations from mm. a stretching mm -hmm. pose. Okay? What's also good about yoga, though, is that, in a way, there's a harboring of anxiety in the body, in the muscles. Mm. You know? And we don't even know this is happening. We just it by in ourselves. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like because we're ramping up the part of our nervous system. It's it's part of the autonomic nervous system. Uh -huh. It's running all the time without our awareness. It controls our heart, our breath, our something. heart rate, our, our breath, our muscle tension, right. um, our blood pressure. Mm -hmm. It has a strong influence on that. And there's this fight or flight system we always talk about. And it's, to, it's an old system designed to prepare us to fight or run from right. saber-toothed tiger. Right. But now we don't have saber-toothed tigers. We have deadlines. We have stresses, parenting our kids in trouble again, and our teenager mouthing off, and, uh, and distance from our partner, and existential stress and traffic. And so we have different stressors, same systems activated. Mm -hmm. So it creates tension in our body that is there long after the stressor is gone. Right, and then the cortisol and so with yoga, is going. you take it out. Now, cardio exercise is very good for that too. Mm -hmm. the thing about yoga is you go right to that edge and you feel that tension, and you consciously breathe and relax it. You are working that mind-body connection then from mind to body. Okay, and then when you sit into a pose and you kind of get over that edge, you're really relaxing into the pose and in the breath. Who knows what direction, it's body to mind, mind to body, whatever it is, it's good, it increases your awareness, increases your ability to calm yourself, to self-regulate, which is it's the ultimate goal of, of much of our therapy, is self-regulation with, especially with any interpersonal problems or any anxiety-related problems. And as I said earlier, before we were on the air, anxiety gone untreated for too long often morphs into depression. Right. So they're, they're very linked. Sometimes people have both of them together. Right. Yeah. We'll get right back more mm -hmm. to how yoga can decrease that mm -hmm. uh, right after we take a break from our sponsor, to our sponsor from the show. Uh, don't touch the mouse. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Aloha. I am John Waihe'i, the longtime host of Talk Story with John Waihe'i. Think Tech Hawaii is important to our community because it gives people the opportunity to voice their opinions and to take an active 
part in our development for the first time think tech hawaii is participating in an online web based fundraising campaign to raise forty thousand dollars give thanks to think tech will run only during the month of november and you can help please donate what you can so that think tech hawaii can continue to raise public awareness and promote civic engagement through free programming like mine. I've already made my donation and I look forward to yours. Please send in your tax deductible contribution by going to this website. Thanks for thinktech.causevox.com. On behalf of the community enriched by Think Tech Hawaii's 30 weekly shows, mahalo for your generosity. Welcome back to Shrink Wrap Hawaii. I'm with my guest, Tomas Cummings, PhD. And we were talking about how yoga can help your mental health in general. And specifically, so when somebody comes to your office and you're being a shrink, uh, do you do yoga with them in the office? Uh, not usually. But I will recommend that they begin yoga, and it's going to be at their level, if they're absolute beginners. I'm going to recommend that they start at the beginning. And I'll recommend YouTube videos, different uh, classes in the community, or different apps. Uh -huh. And But I'll, I'll give a rationale for it as part of a, a comprehensive program for managing their anxiety and its effect on their body. Are there specific so studios you recommend? Well, um, I mentioned the Aloha Yoga Kula on the Windward side right. in town. Heard very good things about Purple Yoga. Open Space has two locations that uh -huh. I know of. I'm sure there are many more. Um, again, the, the essence is that you, you want to make sure there's meditation at the end of it. Uh -huh. You want to make sure that you attend the class that's appropriate for your level. And remember that it's not a competition. Like I said, good teachers will... <laughs> remind you don't compare yourself to others like Brigitte has said more than once you know one yogi says said that the source of all unhappiness is comparison mm. so just go to your edge and breathe and relax with it. And, and you'll find that some days you're more limber than other days but the goal is not to be a pretzel and that's one of the rationales for hot yoga you know <laughs> oh it, it loosens your muscles but uh. physiologically that's a misunderstanding you know, we get to 98.6. Oh, yeah, so as a there, guy so. that grew up doing competitive sports, I think it's hard to remember that. Yeah, like yeah, I stopped yeah. going to classes because yeah. I would see the person next to me with their, you know, ankle around their neck, and yeah, I think, oh, I can do that, and then I hurt my back. And then or, you hurt your <laughs> leg or something. Yeah, it's not a competitive sport. So it's a very different thing. It's not really a sport. It's a practice right. you know, for, for self-improvement. You know, although sports can be a great mechanism for self-improvement. It's very different because it's not competitive. Mm -hmm. And so we have to really, again, we watch our mind. We're building awareness as we do this, and you'll see you get competitive. I wish I could do that. How do you know when you're getting better? Uh, when you relax more into each pose. When you're able to do the ones that are harder for you, like pigeon is a hard one for me. Back right, bends. Right. Back bends are really uh, hard for yeah, me. Yeah. And, uh, and then when you know that you're not avoiding those poses when you practice on your own. And when you do get into certain poses that were more difficult for you, you're more limber. You're getting deeper into them. And you're getting a little more into that intense feeling that we might have called pain before yoga, but now we're just called intense feelings. You know? so that we're, scares me. <laughs> we're, we're not calling it pain anymore because, well, you know, just My like in sports. to say it doesn't hurt yeah, me. <laughs> there's good pain and there's bad pain. Yeah. The good pain isn't sharp, like a knee pain, like, oh, it's, it's the good pain you get in, in your quads when you're mm. running up hills. Mm. You know, just as in uh, yoga poses, the good pain is it's like it's very alive and it's intense, mm. but it's not really, really hurting. You're not doing any damage. Okay, so you go into that edge, breathing and relaxing. And then by staying in the pose for some time, you relax a little more and you overcome this, this is called a stretch reflex. You stretch a muscle, it tends to come back. Right. You know when you hit the, the, go to the doctor and he hits you yeah, yeah, just yeah. below your kneecap and right. you're stretching that tendon connected to your quads, 
it reacts by tensing, moving your leg up. Uh -huh. So that's there, and if you keep holding the pose and relaxing, that reflex uh, gives up, and you just relax more and more into it. So and that's how, how you would that know you're you? getting better. You how know? does that help you in your life with your anxiety or depression or stress? But just that kind of exercise is very calming in terms of the neurotransmitters it can generate, like more serotonin and more relaxing endorphins and cannabinoids. So you feel happier? Yeah, you feel happier, you feel more relaxed. Um, so remember, some of stress resides in the body. Some mm -hmm. of stress is generated completely in our mind. So the yeah. kind that resides in the body, can you release it through the poses? Yes. Oh, yeah. No doubt. The people come in kind of stressed out from work and the commute to class, and they go through a class and they leave a lot mellower, a lot more relaxed. I notice when I come out of class, things look a little more clear, the trees and the skies. Mm. That these things look a little more clear. I'm just more aware, more present. How did you the air. first get into yoga? I, a long time ago, I was really became a fitness freak, way back in the 70s. And... Um, and I had a neighbor who was, she was really into yoga. And she started teaching me some yoga. And I was like, wow, this is a great way to recover after intense you know, running and, and weightlifting. Uh -huh. So I started to incorporate it into regular practice. And then I became a triathlete when I moved to Hawaii. And most serious triathletes do yoga, that the more restorative yoga, mm. to prevent injuries and to recover. Yeah, it's you know, when you do this stretching, you um, bring more vascularization into your tendons. And means blood. Means blood vessels, right. little microcapillaries growing in deeper into the tendons, which means when we tear them, as we do an exercise a little bit, they repair much quicker. Uh -huh. So it's good for injury prevention. So it's physically good for you, it's, not just yeah, mentally. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So getting back to the question, some patients, I always tell patients, look, if you do yoga incorrectly, you'll end up in the ER. <laughs> if you do it correctly, it'll keep you out of the ER. Mm. So like when we do the forward fold, uttasana they call it. All, all forms are end with asana. Uh -huh. Ut uttasana is the forward fold where you just bend over and touch your shins or your toes uh -huh. or the floor if you're really limber. When you do that, you want to make sure that you're bending right at the hip crease, below your hip bone, that you can hit on a counter and it hurts. Uh -huh. So you're stretching the hamstrings and not the lower back. Yeah. In fact, good teachers will tell, tell you, you know, you bend over and then straighten the back so you're at a right angle, right? Mm. And they'll tell you almost kind of arch the back, almost mm. like in lordosis, like a cat in heat, to really, really lengthen the side body, as we call it in yoga. Um, so that you're really lengthening, lengthening, bending at the hips and not the low back, although that happens a little bit, and really stretching the hamstrings, yeah. opening up the hamstrings. And when those hamstrings get more and more loose and limber, it relieves back pain. Oh, yeah, yeah. I had a long bout of back pain, and yeah. the exercises that the physical therapist gave me were a lot of hamstring stuff. Yeah, 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 right. keeping that open more. Yeah. yeah, doing the pigeon was also good for yeah. opening the hips. Yeah, exactly, yeah. and the gluteus and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I find if I go more than a day without doing my stretching, I'm, I'm really stiff. Yeah, yeah, as yeah. age sets in, right? Yeah. A couple apps I'll recommend. Yoga.com is good. You can get the pose of the day. There's, like most apps, there's a free level, and you can buy uh -huh. into a higher, uh -huh. more detailed uh -huh. level. Yoga Journal has an app, and it's a great magazine. It's uh -huh. very affordable. I get it every month. Every month there's something in it, like great poses for low back pain. Oh. You know, great poses for you know, energizing yourself. Great poses for sleep. You know, so and it's a series of anywhere from five to twenty poses that are really helpful for That's surprising, low like, back pain. Because I find that any kind of exercise usually wakes me up. I don't want to do it before I go mm. to sleep. But there are some that are yeah, yeah. For those there. who know any of the poses. The, the ones for sleep involve a forward fold, but more okay. often there's child's pose. Ah, which yeah. is kind of like a yeah, fetus which, thing? Yeah, it's kind of like a fetus. You're, you're on your, your shins and uh -huh. your feet are back and you bring your head to the floor. And you can do it with your um, legs or knees coming out diagonally or mm -hmm. right beneath you. So there's mm -hmm. two ways of doing that. 
Yeah. Um, there are various poses that are more restorative. If you, there are actually whole classes that are called restorative yoga or yin yoga that are really conducive to sleep. Okay. So the, I would assume those are very gentle and They're slow? They're very gentle and very slow. They'll use props. So you set up the props in a certain kind of way, then lie back and you just marinate. Props, you mean like things that support yeah. parts of your body? Yeah, blankets and, and pads. Uh -huh. Bolsters, we call them, and so forth. And you will just lie and marinate in this pose for three to five minutes with nice, relaxing music. Uh, so you don't have to, I mean, I think some people have the image also with certain kinds of meditation that you have to sit in a lotus, which no, would no, cripple no. me. It, yeah, no. Uh, you can do that uh, when you get really good, <laughs> <laughs> when you practice a lot and get limber. Um, but the, the meditation that occurs is actually, as you said earlier, the corpse pose, Shavasana, and you're lying down flat on your back. That happens after you do all your stretching. A common yoga class might start with a sitting pose, uh, just to settle in and set your intention, you know. Mm. Might even start with a little om, you know, just to kind of focus your breath. So when you say breath. set your intention, can you give me an example of what might your intention be? It's individual. The teacher will tell you to take a moment to set your intention. And a person might come to class, my intention is to let go of that work thing that's really bothering me. Mm. Just, and just be here now with yoga. My intention is to learn to forgive myself for missing that opportunity yesterday. My intention will be to calm my mind more. And it may be anything, personal So the or, intention for this session of yeah, yoga, not yeah. for my life. It, it could be a part of your life. Like uh -huh. I said, learn to forgive myself more or something. Uh -huh. Yeah, it, it's individual. It brings a certain awareness and, and focus to your practice. Then you go through the practice and maybe do some on all fours, arching the back. These are also good for sleep. Mm -hmm. They call it cow, where you're arching the back, and uh -huh. cat, where you're uh -huh. arching it the opposite direction. Like you ever see a cat stretch and arch his back up, yeah. and then a cow is like that. Yeah. yeah, and that's very, that's very calming. So you might start with that, and then you go into standing poses, and then you go into some balance poses, which can be pretty intense, which you would not do before sleep. Because right. they're energizing, yeah. they're intense. Yeah. And then they bring you back to the floor, and then you do more and more floor-based poses. Even on the latter ones, you might be on your back with your legs in the air and maybe a strap or just your foot on mm. the toe, stretching out the hamstring. Yeah, that's not before sleep. Yeah, and then you'll do some twists, you know, with the knees, looking, lying on your back, looking to the left, and the knees are falling to the right. And then the opposite. Yeah. yeah. Is there anybody that you would not recommend do yoga? Someone, if someone has a serious back problem, I would definitely consult your physician on it. Be very careful how you approach it. Mm -hmm. And there are whole books on yoga for scoliosis, yoga for back problems. Uh -huh. I have scoliosis. Uh -huh. I'd be a chronic pain patient if it weren't for yoga. You know, I do yoga regularly and I don't have my pain. And, and you're happier. Yeah, and I have a very crooked back. It makes chiropractors shriek or drool depending on their intentions <laughs> <laughs> when they look at the uh, x-ray so so yeah. it could you you could save yourself a lot of pain and money and visits mm -hmm. to the doctor by yeah. simply doing yoga a few times yeah. a week and you yeah and you you went to physical therapy often a physical yeah. therapist will be teaching you a a Extra series of exercises that are very yoga like that's what they did for me exact same. and it's some of them may be same same yeah so. well we're out of time uh, once again, thank, thank you. Thank you. Tomas, thank you so much for coming on and teaching us about yoga today. My pleasure. And thank you for joining us. Tune in next time or anytime you want to hit that computer button and watch Shrink Wrap Hawaii. Aloha.